This is John Colo at DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And in today's episode, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing two Omega juicers. Now, both these juicers are known as horizontal single auger juicers. You know, that'll be different than the vertical single auger juicers that I've compared in other episodes. At present time, the best Omega vertical single auger juicer is... The Omega VSJ843. That's actually the one that sits on my counter that I use the most. I juice a variety of fruits, vegetables, and uh, leafy greens, and all this kind of stuff. It also really does well at extracting nut milks. But today we're talking about the horizontal single auger juicers. And for people that really want to juice a lot of greens, maybe things without a lot of carrots or root vegetables, um, you know, even sprouts and wheatgrass and medicinal, medicinal, medicinal cannabis and herbs and things like that. You know, actually my one of my last episodes was juicing dandelion root in the Omega NC800. Uh, this is the style of machine you will want. If you want to say, if you if you had told me, hey John, I want to juice like straight pineapple, this is not necessarily the best machine to juice straight pineapple. Now if you want to juice pineapple with carrots or celery, this machine is going to do really great. In, in general, the horizontal augers get kind of stuck up when you're trying to juice straight fruit and this depends on the fruit consistency. Some straight fruits are fine, but many will actually jam up this machine. Even cucumbers have been known to clog up this machine. If the cucumber is nice and soft, it'll just kind of mush up instead of juice. And that's where really the vertical single auger juicers will really help you out. But if you're one of those people, John, I'm not going to juice any fruits because, man, the sugar in fruit juice is bad. And I don't know that I'd necessarily, necessarily agree with that. You know, the fruit sugar in the you know fruits that you make from the juice are one of the best sugars around compared to virtually any other kind of sugar on the planet and let, instead of in let in, other than eating the fresh fruits whole and getting all the uh, soluble and insoluble fiber in the juice you're just getting the soluble fiber and you're missing the insoluble fiber but uh, the fact of the matter is the sugar as it comes in the fruit comes with many other benefits besides just the sugar as an isolated nutrient in like that white sugar in that coffee cake or you know cookie that you recently ate right the fruit in the fruit sugar is the natural sugar uh, from the earth not man-made not refined all this kind of stuff but also it contains many other benefits in even the fruit juice the living structured water right the vitamins and the minerals more importantly the phytochemicals and phytonutrients even in apples and the apple skin they've determined there's cancer fighting properties which is completely amazing so you want to get those deep rich dark pigmented apples you know, the most colorful, deepest colors you could get for more of the anti-disease fighting activity. And if you just shun all fruit because of the fruit sugar, right, you're going to miss out on some of the very beneficial properties. Plus, you know, uh, some of the fruits could help make your uh, juices taste a lot better. But anyways, uh, so if you said, John, I want to juice like 80% sprouts and leafy greens or even 70% or maybe even 60%, these are some of the machines that I would recommend, you know, if you're not going to juice a lot of fruit. So anyways... The machines we got today, my favorite horizontal single auger juicer at this time is the Omega NC800. This is the latest design. Uh, it just works really well, has the largest feed chute, really easy to clean. And then uh, we got the all new, just released Omega Cube Model 300. The Omega Cube is a brand new concept, and while it is also a single auger, a horizontal juicer it's just a little bit different than the NC 800 now first difference is the price right this unit will cost you twenty dollars more than the unit over here and that's because it's maybe in a more nice and sleek convenient form factor right this one stores really nice and easily all the parts are actually um, stored within the little square cube and that's why they call it the juice cube and when it's storing, it looks like this. You could store it on your counter or like I do on a shelf. And then you can assemble it and it's ready to juice. And you can store it all back here so that all your juicing parts are in one place, including things like the pusher, even the cleaning brush over here, and even some parts. There's a little trap door in the back that drops down that has uh, some of the other parts. As with the Omega NC800, this guy's, you know, a little bit larger footprint on the table. Kind of looks like a little puppy with the, like the little leg here it has. And it's a lot larger. You know, and this may not look as you no know, neat or clean, you know, on your countertop, but in my opinion, it's a little more functional, functional, easier to use because it's it, once once it's all ready and set up on your counter, it's ready to go. With this, you have to like you know untake this apart and set up all the stuff. 
but that's a pro and a con, right? I know some of you guys are really into design and like things that are neat and tidy and gonna compact down, and for that you're gonna pay 20 more bucks. If you want something more functional, ready to use, <laughs> at a whim's notice, at a moment's notice, then the NC800 is the way to go. So uh, that being said, both these machines have the longest warranty in the juicing industry, which is a full 15 year warranty backed up by Omega. And the comment I want to make on that is that you know, there's some comments online that Omega hasn't been taking care of customers. And I do want to put it out there that all my customers of DiscountJuicers.com that have ever had any warranty issues with Omega products has gotten resolved. So I can't talk about if you buy the juicer from another big box store or other online super retailer, um, you know, if you're going to get customer service. But I can tell you this, if you purchase from Discount Juicers, I have a personal relationship with Omega. I see their their vice president, their, even their president, uh, their sales reps, at least two, three, four times a year, every year when I make visits to visit them and when I see them at different trade shows. And so because we have a special relationship, I'll make sure that your warranty uh, needs are covered, you know, personally, if they're not taking care of you. And so I can't vouch or say that other big box companies, that to them, you're just another sale, another number, you don't really care. You know, to me, you matter, you know, uh, juicing is my lifeblood, literally. I mean, for my health, I juice every day, and I, that's why I got into juicing, because it literally saved my life by including more of these fresh fruits and vegetables in me, and I know the power that juicing could have. Plus, also, it's my lifeblood because it pays all my bills. But nonetheless, um, you know, juicing can definitely help you guys out, so don't be concerned about buying an Omega juicer if you get it from discount juicers. So, aside from the warranty, what are some of the other differences on these machines? Well. You know, basically, uh, this one has a nice, easy carry handle, right? You can pick it up really nice and easily and carry it. This one does not have a carry handle, so you're going to actually have to use your hands and put it underneath and grab it. And let's see which one of these is heavier. Oh. <laughs> I'm definitely going to say the uh, Cube Juicer is heavier than the NC800. So maybe if you need to be moving around things in your kitchen, you're going to store it on a shelf. This might be a bit more easy and convenient because it has a nice handle that you could grab. It's not going to drop with this. You know, if you get an unstable footing, it may slip out of your hands, it may drop since there's actually not a carry handle. This would be probably be maybe a better unit to be stationary, um, you know, just on your countertop. And that being said, I do encourage you guys to leave your juicer on your countertop. It is more likely to be used if it's left out than if it's hidden in a cover that you got to take out every time you're going to juice. Of course, the convenience factor of this, all the parts are included. You know, I've had many people over the years say, John, I lost my juicing screen or this part or that part, can you send me one? And then they'll have to buy an extra, but you know, because with this, all the parts are separate. So I always try to like leave some of the parts like on top of the machine. So here's one of the parts that comes with it. I'll just kind of like leave it up on the top here so that it's all, always ready and uh, accessible by me when I need it. All my parts are together. Oh, and then, uh, oh, so the next thing I want to get into, the operation of both these machines are basically the same. So the warranty is the same. The price is less on this guy. This one's a little bit more convenient, uh, weighs a little bit less. Um, yeah, it has a carry handle. Oh, let's talk about some of the specific differences. So number one, the motor wattage. So the wattage on this motor is 150 watts. And that being said, I've never had this motor stop on me juicing anything. I've put carrots, I've put beets, I've put yacone, I've put all kinds of stuff through here. And it's never stopped when I'm juicing. This motor, on the other hand, is 200 watts. So you might be thinking, John, it's a more powerful motor. It's 50 watts more. And likewise, I haven't had this motor stop on me with anything I've ever put in it either. Uh, that being said, you know, just because a motor has 50 more watts doesn't mean it's necessarily better. It may or may not be. And what's more important than just the wattage is the quality of the motor build, the windings on the motor, and all this kind of stuff, right? So it's my opinion that it's too tough to call which motor is really better. I would say that this motor, because it does draw less wattage, is going to be less on your electricity bill. And if you're one of those people that live off the grid and conserving power is very important to you, then this one's definitely going to you know, save you some money. But nonetheless, both these machines have sufficient motor power to get the job done. All right, so with that, I think the next thing I want to get into is actually disassembling each of these machines, or in this case of the cube is assembling it and then disassembling it and comparing each of the different parts of for you. So I like that this is already set up and ready to use, but to use the cube, you're gonna have to take off this top part and then you could use this, you could put it on the side, use it as a little produce tray, and then you could take off um, the little collection bowls and then we're gonna go ahead and, um, let's see here, 
take off the uh, main body housing, we just basically flip this over and it just goes back in, slides back on. And then on the end of this, we need to put the end cap here. And uh, that, slides, that slides on there. And then we have a uh, funnel here that goes on the top of the juicer. And then you have a bin for pulp that will end up actually over here to catch the pulp. And then you have a little uh, bin for the juice that'll go right there to catch the juice. Oh, and then you have a little strainer that actually we're not going to use in this test because I'm not going to use a strainer with the Omega NC800. So now that we got both these juicers set up, let's go ahead and kind of compare side by side some of the many different parts on the machine. One of the first things I like to say is that the Omega NC800 is a direct, more of a direct drive machine. The motor's in here and it basically turns the auger, whereas on the NC800, it uh, has to be gear driven because the motor's inside this main box and there's a little projection here that basically uh, sends out the power to turn the gear. I personally like more, uh, you know, more of a direct drive system. Uh, to me, that means kind of like less parts to fail. So that's important to you. But once again, you know, if this should fail, 15 year full warranty. Um, oh, the first thing I want to compare is actually the juice catch cup. So these are the juice catch cups for the Omega NC800. I definitely like these a lot better than these guys. I mean, these guys were designed to fit into the cube so that they fit uh, properly. Uh, these ones were just, uh, designed to be actually as large as possible and easy to handle. So let's see, this one actually goes up to a 900 milliliters, about 30 ounces, and I would say that the NC800 uh, catch cup is larger. And then actually over on the pulp catch, this is a notably different, um, the NC800 pulp catch bin is much larger. So this means you will have to empty this uh, less for the same volume of juice created since this will fill up uh, much quicker there. Uh, let's see here, number two, let's take a look at the pushers. So this is the pusher on the Omega NC800 and this is the pusher on the cube juicer. Uh, the pusher is a little bit larger so that's gonna allow you to get a better grip and push food into the juicer a little bit more efficiently. Let's see, I think we'll go ahead and start taking off pieces on the end here. So first we're gonna go ahead and take off the uh, end cap, the drum cap, and the outlet adjusting knob. If we take these parts both off, uh, this is what they look like. This one kind of protrudes out more, so there's more of a pulp run that has to go through. And this one's kind of a, just kind of comes right out. This is kind of offset so that the pulp actually falls over the ledge into the bin there. I do like on this unit that there is a little lever, so that can help you actually um, uh, take it on and off. On the NC800, actually, there's kind of uh, inset grooves on here, so you could actually grab it nicely. Let's see, over on this unit, there they have, this is an adjustable end cap. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a little line or mark on this piece here. And you could turn this from a zero, one, up to one, two, three, up to one, two, three, and that's the adjustments there. I always encourage you guys, if you're juicing like vegetables and leafy greens, hard vegetables like carrots, or even a mixed juice, leafy greens, carrots, and apples, or fruits, have it on three. That's gonna put the most back pressure on, uh, in the, on the pulp so that it's gonna wring out drier until it comes out. Now over on the um, Omega NC800, looks like you have a little bit more flexibility. Uh, this goes from zero when it's off, and it goes up to one, two, three, four, five. So uh, this looks like there's a little bit more range on here than on the Omega uh, Cube Juicer where it just goes to three. So you have a little bit more maybe precision adjustments. Although you could, you know, on this unit, you know, stop between like uh, one, one and a half or even two or even three, but the range doesn't seem quite as much as on the Omega NC800. Like it's maybe like almost a full quarter turn. On this one, it's almost like maybe a third of a turn uh, on that. So yeah, a little bit more adjustment on the NC800. So I'll we'll have to say win for the NC800 on that. Next, let's take a look at the screens here. We'll pop both these screens out. In some ways, these screens are similar, and in some ways, they are different. All right, so first thing I wanna look at is actually uh, how they're made. First off, both of them have a little uh, silicone ring on the end. This is also there to keep uh, some back pressure on the juicer when it's uh, on the pulp when it's running. Uh, next thing I wanna show you is actually the screen. So that there's a first stage screen and a second stage screen. 
The first stage screen on the Cube is actually a stainless steel inset screen. And so it's uh, basically a plastic uh, frame with the stainless steel. And then on the NC800, it's basically plastic, all plastic. And so it looks like to me that actually the, there's more screen area on this section of the Cube than on the Omega NC800. And uh, the thing I'd like to say on that is that uh, this screen section basically generally only works on initial crush. So if you put something in very watery, so like an uh, orange segment, if you put an orange segment in, the instant the auger comes around and crushes that orange segment, all the juice is going to fall out. And generally it goes out to stage one. For something like carrots, virtually no juice ever falls out the uh, stage one as soon as you put carrots in, because when you crush carrots, juice doesn't instantly come out until it's ground up a little bit more. So then uh, as the pulp runs down uh, these uh, two um, cones, it's basically crushed up against the wall. And there's some plastic ribbing inside here that I'm feeling. And the uh, cube juicer has one, two, three, four, five ribs. And the NC800 has one, two, three, four, five, six ribs. So that means the NC800 is a little bit more efficient at cutting things up because there's an extra plastic rib. But after it gets past the plastic rib, then it kind of rubs into the inside of the screen where there's actually, uh, it goes from plastic ribbing, and I don't know if you guys can see that in there, to stainless steel ribbing. And uh, inside here, uh, let's see here, there's a uh, one, two, let's just start here. All right, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 stainless steel ribs. And on this one, there's a, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten large stainless steel ribs. And then there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten small ones. That being said, if I run my finger in these ribs in here, right, they're protruding, so they are definitely ribs, but they're not, not that sharp. If I run my finger in the Omega NC800 housing, um, you know, these ribs are a bit sharper, and if I... If I rub my finger too hard in there, actually, I'm kind of scared I'm going to cut my finger. So what this means to me is that this means this is going to do a better job of cutting up the produce, which probably means it's going to be more effective at extracting juice. Uh, next, of course, are the holes in the screen. And to me, if we look at the holes on the screen, I mean, it looks like to be about, uh, it's about a similar size. I want to kind of be sure about some of the specifications on this, so we're going to get out my micrometer in a second. But the other thing I want to show you guys is actually the reinforcement. So uh, this screen is basically just a conical shape with no major structural reinforcement. Whereas on the NC800, if you guys could see, there's like a round disc built into this. And there's not any round disc on this one. In addition, on the bottom, uh, there's these two little lines that go back to give kind of more rigid rigidity and structure and strength uh, to this whole piece here. Uh, both these machines should be made out of the GE Ultimate material. And I can't really tell anything by tapping on them. <laughs> but what I will do is we're going to get out my uh, micrometer here. This is uh, meant for measuring uh, fine, small measurements or caliper. And so the interesting thing is if we look at just this outer edge right here, it's kind of has a thickness. And if we put my micro micrometer on that, um, if you guys could see that. Oh, let me go ahead and do that again there. If you see that, it's like 0 0.16. I don't know if you guys could see that on there. But that's 0 0.16 thickness on the outer ring. That's one of the major structural components of the screen. And if we go on the Omega NT800, it definitely looks thicker to me. We're going to go ahead and push that down. Uh, let's see here if I can show that to you guys too. That's uh, 0 0.20. So, you know, maybe that's 0 0.15 and 0 0.20. Nonetheless, uh, this uh, piece seems to be a little more beefier, stronger. And this one's maybe, uh, and this one's heavier. This one's maybe a little bit more lighter. So does that mean this is more heavy duty and this is maybe less duty? You know, one of the challenges with all horizontal single auger juicers is that they may break the screen, especially if you're not paying attention on feeding and rotating the produce properly. So, uh, you know, I've had very few instances of people breaking the NC800 screen. In general, that happens more with the 8000 series of machines. Uh, the cube juicer is so new, I haven't really have any reports of uh, this screen breaking at present time. Oh, the other thing I want to check out, though, is uh, the screen spec. So on this screen, I want to measure the, uh, the total overall uh, air, the length of the screen here. 
So on this one, it looks like to be 0.78. And on this guy, uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and measure that all the way out. Uh, 0.78 or 74. So that's approximately the same, maybe a little bit different. But yeah, I mean, that's like micro micrometers. It's like so, the, the, the difference is negligible. So <laughs> the spec is probably 0.75. Anyways, the next thing I want to point out is actually the augers here. Let's go ahead and pull out both these augers. And if we hold up these augers side by side, actually, they look fairly similar. They're a, they're a tad bit different, but they're fairly similar. Uh, yeah, I mean, for all practical purposes, they're pretty much the same. I mean, they're a little bit different, but they're fairly similar, like, in how they're designed. They each have four kind of ribbing points that kind of moves and funnels the, the produce down. And yeah, I mean, I can't really, both these are made out of the GE Ulta material, and I can't really say much else about that. <laughs> Next, I want to go ahead and take off these uh, drums, or the main body of the juicer with a feed chute. Take both these guys off. And while these guys are similar, they're also a little bit different. See here, I mean, both look like they, oh, this one has actually three locking rims that lock it on to the housing. This one actually has four. And I mean, other than that, they pretty much do a similar job. This one actually has a little X, so you can't stick your fingers up in there when you're juicing. Uh, this one really does not, but the screen is kind of blocking your way, so you can't really stick your fingers up in there anyways. I guess probably the main uh, difference about this is the feed chute uh, size. So the feed chute size over on the NT800 is uh, basically uh, 2 inches by 1.5 inches. And over on the uh, cube juicer, it's 1.75 inches by 1.5 inches. So basically, the NT800 has a 12 and a half percentage larger um, feed chute size. In addition, you guys can see this funnel. It's actually quite small in comparison to the funnel here. So if you want to feed something like cherry tomatoes, it's going to be a lot easier to feed the cherry tomatoes into the NC800 with its larger feed chute than the cube juicer. And I think, you know, that's pretty much it. We got down to all the parts. Oh, forgot a part, actually. Uh, the other part is both these machines come with what's known as a blank or homogenizing uh, plate or solid uh, juicing cone. And that's these guys right here. And once again, much like the juicing screen, both these guys, you know, this has the reinforcements on the bottom and that ring around it, and this one does not. And then the other thing is, you know, this one actually um, has that ribbing on the inside that, uh, you know, appears when I put my finger inside there and run it around. It's a fair bit sharper than this one that's kind of more rounded. So to me, that means if you're going to be homogenizing or grinding things up, this one's going to do a tad bit better job uh, overall. So I think that's kind of important to note because just looking at these two things, oh, they're the same and these juicers are the same and all this stuff, but I really kind of try to get into the details of it. But yeah, that's pretty much the basics on these guys. Um, I, I think the next thing I'd like to do is actually reassemble and we'll explain how to reassemble. It's very easy on both these machines. Take the drum, put it on. There's a little collar here that's on open. We'll just slide it to close. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take the auger, slide the auger all the way in there till it seats and this does not seat fully all the way back. Next, we're going to go ahead and take the juicing screen. The screen is always face down this part. It just slides right in. Then finally, the end cap goes right on. Turn that to lock, and we're going to crank that up to five since we'll be juicing some vegetables in a minute. Uh, over on the cube, once again, take the main uh, housing here and uh, slide that to open and put that in, slide it to close. Next, we're going to go ahead and take that auger, slide that right down the middle of the juicer there. And uh, we're going to take our juicing screen, first stage juicing screen always is on the bottom, slide that in. I mean, both these machines are super simple, super easy to assemble. Uh, final piece is the outlet uh, knob, and it says open and close, so we're just going to go ahead and slide it over to the open, and then slide it to the close, and make sure this is all the way set to three, so we have maximum pressure to get the maximum yield in our juice off test that will be coming at you and doing next. So now we're all ready and set up to start juicing, but first to make sure we got a fair juice off, we're gonna go ahead and do a weigh-in. So I wanna show you guys a close-up on both scales right now. All right, let's go ahead and do a close-up on both scales for you to make sure we have a fair fight over on the side of the NC800. Uh, looks like we have a total of uh, two pounds, 1.9 ounces. 
And then uh, going over to the Omega Cube Juicer. Once again, looks like we have a uh, two pounds, 1.9 ounces. And today we are juicing things like leafy greens, such as the uh, romaine hearts, carrots, apple, and some beet. So now that you guys see we got a fair fight, now we're gonna go in, get into the juicing. So let's maybe move these scales out of the way. Today I will not be running a time. Normally I'll do a stopwatch time on each juicer so we can see actually how long it takes to juice in each one. But these machines for all practical purposes should be about the same amount of time. The feed shoots maybe a little bit larger on the NC800, but the feed shoot size is actually not the slowdown point of the juicing. Uh, the slowdown point of juicing in these machines is actually that you have to actually push each item into the juicer uh, with the pusher as the juicer is running and both these machines run at the same exact RPM. So first let's go ahead and juice in the Omega NC800. First we're going to go ahead and turn this baby on and I always encourage you guys to juice the uh, softer produce item first. So we're going to go ahead and take this romaine leaf lettuce, maybe chop it in half and we're just going to go ahead and feed it into the machine. I do like the larger feed sheet on the Omega NC800. The produce just pushes right in. You will need to be using the pusher unlike a horizontal auger juicer that you can literally drop things in and it auto feeds. Uh, with this style machine, you do need to push things in. Uh, I, I encourage you guys on any juicer to always rotate the produce. So we just put in some of the lettuce. Now we're gonna put in a nice hard texture that helps to push and clear out all the pulp in the machine. We're gonna go ahead and throw a carrot in there. Uh, next, I think we're gonna go ahead and uh, chop up this apple, maybe into, into quarters and uh, drop that in the machine as well. And we're gonna go ahead and follow that with a carrot. So we're pushing in the apple with a carrot. All this is working really great so far, simple and easy. I think we'll go ahead and put in some of the uh, lettuce next. Now I do want to say that the horizontal single R juicers are the best juicers for juicing greens, especially if you want to juice them straight or if you're trying to juice like straight greens with a lot of celery. Uh, these would be the ones that I would recommend for you. And once again, follow that lettuce in with a piece of carrot. And then uh, follow it with an apple. And now we're going to have to use the pusher. Now when using the pusher, you know, Basically, just put enough force on the pusher to guide the produce in. Don't like sit there and I can get it in. I'm like a muscle man. I can like jam it in there. Don't try to jam it in there. Just give some force on it so as the arc comes around, it kind of cuts it off at its own uh, pace and speed. Next, we're going to go ahead and cut up uh, some of this beet here to fit in. Let's see if this piece, nice big fat piece of beet fit it in. Look at this machine. No problem. Sucks in that beet, cuts it on up, and out comes the, uh, the beet pulp. Now I do want to remind you guys, as you guys are seeing the juicing process live, unedited, uh, once again follow with maybe an apple, um, you guys are seeing we're separating out the pulp. And now uh, most people think, oh John, that pulp, you're losing all the fiber in the juice. Well that actually would be an inaccurate statement because there's more than just, you know, uh, the fiber that's coming out. There's soluble and insoluble fiber, which are the two main kind of fibers that people generally talk about. And uh, if you look at the word soluble fiber, Soluble means it dissolves in water, so you're going to get the majority of the soluble fiber even when you're juicing in a juicer. And for example, in something like carrots, uh, carrots are about 48% of the soluble fiber. So even if you're juicing the carrots, you're going to get almost half the fiber. That's something to remember. And it's the uh, soluble fiber that may help um, slow down the absorption of the sugar into your bloodstream. In addition, you know, fiber is great. It feeds our microbiome or beneficial bacteria in us and it keeps them happy and it's very important to keep your uh, microbiome happy. As you guys can see, we're basically done juicing the apple. Let's go ahead and put the last amount of uh, romaine in here. Once again, I just sliced them in half and that easily fit into the NC800 uh, feed chute that's a little bit larger than the cube. Go ahead and use that pusher and just set my hand down on it to help it feed in. This is also the style machine that I would recommend to you guys if you guys want to juice wheatgrass. All right, some of the lettuce is kind of hanging out. It's not getting fully pushed in, so we're gonna go ahead and follow that with a carrot. 
that should help some of that softer lettuce pulp or can help soft, you know, uh, leafy green pulp kind of get sucked in the machine so that it can get fully extracted. Next, let's go ahead and uh, put in a little more of a carrot. All right, we got some nice clean carrot pulp coming out. We're going to go ahead and follow that with the rest of the feet there. A little bit larger than the feed chute, but we got it, uh, got it in there and push this down once again. Just putting some weight on the pusher to get the beat to go through. And uh, finally we're going to go ahead and drop in that carrot. And depending on you know what you're juicing, you may not need to use the pusher. So on these smaller diameter carrots, you know the juicer basically the auger comes around and chunks off a piece at a time. Is it going to work on that one? I might need to get it started a little bit with a few, few chops. But once it gets started, and then we can just drop the rest in, and it should pretty much auto feed in there. So that's the best way to feed anything on a single auger style machine. All right, so it looks like a little bit of piece of the carrot is just sitting and spinning in there. Uh, maybe it'll just sit and spin inside there, or maybe I'll try to hit the reverse button, try to dislodge that a little bit. And hit forward. All right, so it's not really moving. We got a piece of carrot stuck in the auger, and that's just bound to happen. But nonetheless, it looks like all the juice has come out of the Omega NT800. Last thing I like to do on any horizontal auger juicer is uh, tip it up. So I tip it up this direction, maybe tip it up this direction a little bit, and that'll help get a little bit of juice out that was uh, caught in the machine. All right, so that worked relatively easily. Uh, next, let's go ahead and juice in the Omega uh, Cube Juicer. Once again, turn this baby on. The switch is on the top, the switch is on the back of this machine. This one seems a little bit louder than the uh, Omega NC800. Cut this romaine uh, heart in half. Let's go ahead and feed this stuff in. This feed is a little bit smaller, a little bit more difficult to feed things in uh, to the cube. Oh, another major difference between these two machines that I actually did not get to mention earlier is COO, our country of origin, or where these machines were made. So the uh, Omega Cube Juicer is actually made in China, and the Omega NC800 Juicer is made in Korea. So yes, the juicer made in Korea costs $20 less, <laughs> so you're going to pay more for a juicer made in China. But it'll be interesting to see the yields on this. In general, you know, actually I own a car that was made in Korea myself. <laughs> and I find things made in Korea actually have a little bit higher quality uh, overall uh, than things made in China. But, you know, so far I haven't had any complaints. Actually, I had one customer with a def some defects in the cube that it Omega immediately took care of and replaced for me. Once again, got that lettuce in there followed by... The carrot looks like it's juicing on up really good. I can see the pulp kind of ejecting out the back side. Let's see next, I think we went for that apple in the NC800. Let's go ahead and throw this in the cube. Hopefully just cut it in a force will fit. Nope, will not fit. So I was able to cut the apple in a force on the NC800, but on the cube, we're gonna have to cut them uh, just a little bit smaller. It's gonna take a little bit more time, but not too bad. Once again, follow the piece of apple with some carrots to help it get pushed in there. Put another small piece of apple in there and follow it up with the carrot. I think next we're going to go ahead and uh, go for some of that beet there. We're going to have to cut this beet into smaller pieces due to the feed shoot size. And pop out that pusher and uh, push that beet in there. Once again, beets and these hard fibrous root vegetables no match for the Omega juicers. All right, let's go ahead and throw in some more of that apple in there. Once again, just like on the NC800, that carrot pretty much auto feeds into the juicer there. Take another piece of beef there. Another piece of apple, and we'll follow that with another carrot. As you guys can see, we're getting the juice coming out there and we're getting the pulp on the backside. All right, I think we're gonna go ahead and uh, juice up this uh, romaine heart, rest of this stuff. Let's go ahead and try to cut this baby in half and uh, see if we could uh, fit it in the Omega Cube. All right, so it does kind of compress up, a little bit more difficult 
Each shoot's a 12 and a half percent smaller, but I could uh, I could cram it in there with some force. I definitely do like the larger feed chute of the Omega NC800. Now, virtually all other feed chutes on all other single auger juicers, aside from, oh, hit the off button, aside from the Omega NC800 and the Cube and the Omega 8007, 8008 are all one and a quarter inch um, in diameter circular. So those are significantly smaller. So that's why I don't like most single auger juicers because the feed chute's even smaller than this machine, which is already uh, too small for me. I like the largest feed chute, so I want a company to come out with a three inch wide, horizontal, single auger style feed chute. Now that would be impressive. That's gonna allow you to do less cutting. That's also gonna basically increase their auger size and increase their production. <laughs> and the other thing I'd like to see is actually an all stainless steel auger on a horizontal auger juicer. All right, so I'm trying to put that piece of feed in there um, you know, I might have to cut it smaller to make it fit up. So yeah, I mean, just just a little bit bigger auger makes it a lot more convenient and easy to use. I mean, a feed chute, sorry. All right, got that bead in there, following it with a carrot. Let that run, drop that baby in, and let it juice on up. All right, let's go ahead and uh, juice the rest of this uh, these greens here on my lettuce. All right, I do want to say that I am getting a little bit of splashing on uh, the on the table here from the juice as it's coming out, so that means a bit more to clean. Um, on the NC800 side, I see a few drops, droplets, but you know there's a, probably a lot more on this side uh, due maybe the juice splashing or something going on there. Let's go ahead and push that in. Yeah, it's, it's taking a little bit longer to juice over on the cube side than the Omega. NC800 side. All right, so once we got in, that in there, let's go ahead and follow that with another carrot. I do see lettuce just spinning around in the juicer and not getting ejected. Uh, once again, let's follow that by maybe a piece of apple, follow that with a little bit of carrot, and then let's go ahead and put in another piece of apple, and follow that with some carrot there. So we're gonna go ahead and follow that with an apple. <laughs> Follow that with the last piece of beet there. Chunks up that beet right up. And then we finally got the last carrot. I always want to encourage you guys to finish juicing with some kind of hard vegetable, whether that's something like carrots or beets or you know celery, something really hard to try to get that pulp kind of moving through the machine uh, to get it to juice fully. All right, once we're done, I like that we can put the pusher right back into the cube, although you should probably be washing it first. And looks like it's uh, you know still ringing out some juice, so we're just gonna go ahead and uh, let it run a bit more. Let's see if we could get all the pulp out of here. So now I want to show you guys this. This is actually quite interesting. Let's go ahead and clean some of this stuff up on the table a little bit. All right, go ahead and turn off the cube juicer. And once again, on the cube juicer, I'm gonna try to like tip this up a little bit. See if we can get a little bit of juice out. And we're gonna go ahead and tip this side up a little bit. See if we get some juice out there. That'll help out a little bit. All right, so on the pulp catch bins, look at this, this is telling, you know. Uh, this pulp catch bin, if we shake it down, it's maybe a little bit, maybe two thirds full. This guy's like almost maxed out. So juicing any more than maybe a little bit more than uh, two pounds of produce, you're gonna have to be emptying your pulp catch bin in the cube. With this, you probably could have got up to maybe three, maybe pushing maybe four pounds, depending on what you're juicing. Um, let's see, I wanna check the pulp next, so that's one of my favorite tests. We're just gonna go ahead and take a random sample of some of this pulp here, hold it up to the camera to you guys, and we're gonna squeeze. One, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> so yeah, d definitely still squeeze some of the uh, juice out of that. And uh, let's go ahead and take the pulp from the Omega NC800 and take this pulp and squeeze. All right, I'm still squeezing some pulp or some juice out of that pulp as well. I mean, just from uh, feeling it, it seems to me that the 
um, pulp on the cube is just a tad bit wetter, not much. I mean, they're both fairly similar. Um, one of the cool things about both these machines is you could always take the pulp and actually feed it back through the machine a second time to get further extraction. Uh, that is beyond the scope of this simple uh, one time through test, since most people may not do that. Uh, next, let's go ahead and take a look at the juices here. Here's the juice created in the cube, and here is the juice created in the Omega NC800. Now, if we just look at a side-by-side, -side, it looks like they're almost up at the same level, but the problem is these are different size containers, so we can't compare oranges to apples, so I want to compare apples to apples. So in order to do this, we need to strain both these juicers, juices into separate containers. So what I have today are two standardized uh, Pyrex uh, measuring cups that I always measure the uh, produce uh, or the juice into. So we got these all laid out and ready. And now we're going to go ahead and pour the juices in. So this is going to do two things. This is going to show us the true yield compared. Uh, number two, it's going to also show us how much uh, pulp the juicer put into the juice. Uh, you know, uh, pulp in the juice can artificially inflate the yield, so you may think you got more than you actually did because you're also drinking a lot of the pulp. Um, in general, both these machines should be fairly good at, uh, you know, taking out most of the pulp on this. But we shall soon find out. So all the juice came out of that, no problem. Um, you know, it has a nice little pour spout with a handle. That's another thing that I want to mention. Over on this unit, there's no pour spout, no handle, so you have to, you know, just kind of pick this up carefully. It's probably easier to pour it out one of the corners than the rounded side. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, no problem to pour that out either. And uh, let's go ahead and shake these both down. All right, Pulp, you're being shaked down. Give me all your juice. All right, so it looks like I got both pulp shaken down, got most of the juice out of the sieves. And uh, as you guys can see, uh, the pulp in each of them look fairly similar. I mean, it looks like almost about the same, about the, almost the same amount of pulp. Uh, to be sure, I just want to go ahead and weigh it out just to kind of get more precise here. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw it up on the scale. We're just throwing it up on the scale in the little sieve that should be the same weight on both. Uh, 3.8 ounces sieve and pulp on the NC800 and over on the cube it's 3.6 so for all practical purposes it's about the same you know technically the cube made a tad bit less pulp but what's more important than the pulp in the juice to me is actually the yield so uh, let's go ahead and put these guys together and give you guys a close-up on the yield all right now I want to give you guys a close-up on the yield so looking over at the NC800 side after straining Looks like we're pretty much right at 600 milliliters on the line. Uh, moving over to the Omega Cube Juicer. A little bit different story. Looks like there's a 600 milliliter mark, and it looks like it's uh, you know right above the 600 milliliter mark, but not quite at the 625 milliliter mark. I'd probably roughly say that's maybe 610 milliliters approximately. And so, yeah, just look at them. They're fairly close, but the cube edged out the Omega NC800 in this comparison. So, as you guys just saw on the yield comparison, the cube basically beat out the Omega NC800. I gotta say I'm surprised, and I gotta say on another level, I'm not really surprised. You know, Omega constantly tries to improve their machines and make them better than the previous machines that have come out. So, the Omega NC800 has been out for a while, and the Cube Juicer is their latest pet project that just was released. So it doesn't surprise me that it made a little bit more yield. Now that being said, yield is not the only factor you should take into consideration when purchasing a juicer. I think the next thing I'd like to do is actually go ahead and try the juice to see if I could taste any discernible taste difference. I mean, these juicers run in the exact same way. They run the exact same RPM. Hmm. That's what it is. That's a decent juice. You guys might want to add a little bit more apples in there for sweetness. And maybe even a little bit of ginger. Mm. That was good. Let's go ahead and try the juice from the cube. See if it tastes any different.
Mm. Actually, interesting. Go ahead and try the NC800 juice again. Mmm. All right, I'm tasting the difference. This is why I do the taste test. So although I ran both juices through a sieve, um, even after doing that, I'm tasting that there's actually more grit in the cube juicer. So there's a little bit more texture to it, whereas the juice on the NC800 is a little bit more fine. This is also noticeable if we kind of look at the pour spout. You can see all the dots. Those are like little uh, spots of fiber. And if we look on the pour spout up on the uh, NC800, you guys can see there's a lot less of that pour spout um, fiber stickage. <laughs> and that translates into, you know, the fiber that's still in the juice that goes in you despite it was went through the sieve. Because even if it went through the sieve, if the holes in the sieve are, uh, you know, uh, uh, this large, but pulp could still get in there if the pulp is smaller than the sieve size. So I think that happened on the cube juicer. And so that may play with the yields a little bit. I don't think that's going to really make too much of a difference because it's really fine fiber. But that will give you a little more texture in the juice if that's what you're looking for. All right. So I guess with that, I got to declare a winner of this juice off comparison. And that's always a really tough one for me when the yields are so close and things are so tight. Ugh. I mean, I told you guys in the get-go that I really prefer the Omega NC800, and even after seeing the yield test and tasting the juice, um, the $20 price difference, and me kind of being more of a functional guy than kind of like looking cool and being hip and making this cube thing, I'm going I'm to go with the winner as the Omega NC800. Although it didn't quite make as much yield, it had a much easier time of juicing um, because of the larger feed chute. It's going to be a little bit easier to clean just because the parts are, you know, easier to uh, disassemble and assemble. This one you got to disassemble it. And then we got some uh, juice drops on the, on the counter here or on the top of the juicer there. And, you know, I just kind of like the shape of the catch containers that are larger on this machine. This one, in my opinion, seems to be a, made of a little bit, little bit better build quality. But once again, both machines have a 15-year warranty. So this would be the machine that I would recommend to you guys if you guys are considering, you know, between the Cube and the NC800. I would personally go with the NC800. Now Omega also does have the Omega NC900, which is identical to the NC800. The only difference is the NC800 is a silver finish, and the NC900 um, uh, C actually has a, a chrome-plated plastic. That being said, they also have an NC900 SS that has a full stainless steel body that does not come with the handle. That one's nice, but that one's a uh, $200 additional just for a stainless steel body, but all the juicing parts are still the standard uh, plastic that you would get. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode, I would encourage you to support me in my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. This allows me to continue to make these educational videos, comparing the different juicers and educating you guys about the powers of fresh fruit and vegetable juices. So I want to thank you guys in advance for those of you guys that have purchased from me, um, that are going to purchase from me, and I want to thank you guys that have purchased from me in the past. If you guys enjoyed this format, also please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Let me know. I'll be sure to do more juice off comparison tests in the future, comparing different juicers amongst one another so you guys can purchase the best juicer for you. And that's simply why I make these videos. So you guys have the knowledge and the power to empower yourselves as a consumer to know what's the best choice to make instead of just some company saying, hey, this one's the best or that one's the best. I show you guys which one's the best and give you my expert uh, commentary on that as well. Also be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 450 videos on this YouTube channel dedicated to teaching you guys and comparing different juicers, dehydrators, and blenders to one another. Also uh, keeping up to date with all the latest uh, improvements and models coming out in the marketplace generally before anybody else does. And also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes. I've coming out about every five to seven days on this YouTube channel. You never know what new juicers I'll be comparing or what new juicer I'll be showing you. Or I can't even wait for those uh, new vacuum blenders to be uh, coming out a little bit later uh, in this year. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.
This is John Colo at DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and in today's episode, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing two Omega juicers. Now, both these juicers are known as horizontal single auger juicers. You know, that'll be different than the vertical single auger juicers that I've compared in other episodes. At present time, the best Omega vertical single auger juicer is the Omega VSJ843. That's actually the one that sits on my counter that I use the most. I juice a variety of fruits, vegetables, and uh, leafy greens, and all this kind of stuff. It also really does well at extracting nut milks. But today we're talking about the horizontal single auger juicers. And for people that really want to juice a lot of greens, maybe things without a lot of carrots or root vegetables, um, you know, even sprouts and wheatgrass and medicinal, medicinal, medicinal cannabis and herbs and things like that. You know, actually my one of my last episodes was juicing dandelion root in the Omega NC800. Uh, this is the style of machine you will want. If you want to say, if you if you had told me, hey John, I want to juice like straight pineapple, this is not necessarily the best machine to juice straight pineapple. Now if you want to juice pineapple with carrots or celery, this machine is going to do really great. In, in general, the horizontal augers get kind of stuck up when you're trying to juice straight fruit and this depends on the fruit consistency. Some straight fruits are fine, but many will actually jam up this machine. Even cucumbers have been known to clog up this machine. If the cucumber is nice and soft, it'll just kind of mush up instead of juice, and that's where really the vertical single auger juicers will really help you out. But if you're one of those people, John, I'm not gonna juice any fruits because, man, the sugar in fruit juice is bad, and I don't know that I'd necessarily, necessarily agree with that. You know, the fruit sugar in the you know fruits that you make from the juice are one of the best sugars around compared to virtually any other kind of sugar on the planet and let, instead of in let in, other than eating the fresh fruits whole and getting all the uh, soluble and insoluble fiber in the juice you're just getting the soluble fiber and you're missing the insoluble fiber but uh, the fact of the matter is the sugar as it comes in the fruit comes with many other benefits besides just the sugar as an isolated nutrient in like that white sugar in that coffee cake or you know cookie that you recently ate right the fruit in the fruit sugar is the natural sugar uh, from the earth not man-made not refined all this kind of stuff but also it contains many other benefits in even the fruit juice the living structured water right the vitamins and the minerals more importantly the phytochemicals and phytonutrients even in apples and the apple skin they've determined there's cancer fighting properties which is completely amazing so you want to get those deep rich dark pigmented apples you know, the most colorful, deepest colors you could get for more of the anti-disease fighting activity. And if you just shun all fruit because of the fruit sugar, right, you're going to miss out on some of the very beneficial properties. Plus, you know, uh, some of the fruits could help make your uh, juices taste a lot better. But anyways, uh, so if you said, John, I want to juice like 80% sprouts and leafy greens or even 70% or maybe even 60%, these are some of the machines that I would recommend, you know, if you're not going to juice a lot of fruit. So anyways... The machines we got today, my favorite horizontal single auger juicer at this time is the Omega NC800. This is the latest design. Uh, it just works really well, has the largest feed chute, really easy to clean. And then uh, we got the all new, just released Omega Cube Model 300. The Omega Cube is a brand new concept, and while it is also a single auger, a horizontal juicer, it's just a little bit different than the NC800. Now, first difference is the price, right? This unit will cost you $20 more than the unit over here, and that's because it's maybe in a more nice and sleek, convenient form factor, right? This one stores really nice and easily. All the parts are actually um, stored within the little square cube, and that's why they call it the juice cube. And when it's storing, it looks like this. You can store it on your counter or like I do on a shelf. And then you can assemble it and it's ready to juice. And you can store it all back here so that all your juicing parts are in one place, including things like the pusher, even the cleaning brush over here, and even some parts. There's a little trap door in the back that drops down that has uh, some of the other parts. As with the Omega NC800, this guy's, you know, a little bit larger footprint on the table. Kind of looks like a little puppy with the, like the little leg here it has. And it's a lot larger. You know, and this may not look as you no know, neat or clean, you know, on your countertop, but in my opinion, it's a little more functional, functional, easier to use because it's it, once once it's all ready and set up on your counter, it's ready to go. With this, you have to like, you know, untake this apart and set up all.